Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Appreciate you checking it out. Hope everyone is doing well. This is going to be the second video in our arterial line waveforms and pressure monitoring video series. The first one we posted just recently, actually earlier today. Uh, we'll link it in this video's description. You can find it on the homepage. Uh, it's an introductory video to arterial line. So if you need an introduction to the arterial line waveform, definitely check out that video first as it will provide a foundation to better understand this video and vice versa. Today we're going to be talking about dampening, how to look for dampening, what is under dampening, over dampening, how to troubleshoot. So with no further ado, 30 second break for the introduction, don't go anywhere. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So, dampening. Well, the first thing to understand about dampening is your arterial line blood pressure and waveform is only as good as your circuit is, right? We talked about in that initial video how arterial lines read the blood pressure. And without going into that in as much detail, uh, we drew kind of the circuit here, right? This is the artery in the wrist. This here is the catheter. And it's sitting with its hollow tube in the artery. And as the heart pumps, right, here's our heart, as it pumps blood into the arteries, that blood pumps up into this catheter. The catheter is attached to this tubing that's filled with saline, right? So when the blood pumps into the catheter, what it does is it kind of bumps into that saline and pulses that saline up. And that saline pulses up towards the transducer, which there's the saline pressure bag kind of keeping the tubing full of saline, but it bumps up into that transducer and that transducer using algorithms converts it into a blood pressure that it displays on the screen, right? And this closed system, you can imagine, the accuracy of this blood pressure is only gonna be as good as this system is closed. If there's little air bubbles, if this catheter is bumping up against the vessel wall, or there's a blood clot in it, or there's too much tubing, too little tubing, et cetera, et cetera, all that can affect the blood pressure reading um, because all that affects how the saline in this tubing gets to this transducer. So what exactly is dampening? Well, dampening is essentially what we call inaccurate reads that come on the arterial line waveform blood pressure that's shown on the monitor. And it's essentially saying that the blood pressure being read is not totally accurate because something is going on in that system that leads to inaccuracy. And that'll start to make more sense as we talk and it goes on. So just as a reminder, the first thing we put here is a normal arterial line waveform, right? This is what it's gonna look like up on the monitor right here. And we talked about you have the systolic upstroke, the systolic decline, the dichrotic notch, the diastolic runoff. This is your systolic blood pressure. This is your diastolic blood pressure. The area under the curve is the mean arterial pressure, aortic valve opening, aortic valve closing. We went through all that in that first video, so definitely check it out if this looks, um, uh, if this is unfamiliar to you, all right, because this is a normal waveform. Now, if we go down this waveform here, and I'll keep the normal one in sight too, this is an over dampened waveform, all right? See how it does not have kind of as sharp as an up peak. It doesn't have a nice dichrotic notch. It's kind of flatter and longer. That's an over dampened or it's too dampened. Um, it's not as sharp and crisp. And again, we'll talk about what all this means, but I just wanted to get you give you a visual. Then this here is an under dampened. Oh, we have our sound on. Uh, an under dampened waveform. And you can see here that it comes up more quickly and then it actually has multiple 
kind of dichrotic notches as, as it is coming down. It is under dampened or it's not damp enough. It's kind of too brisk. And over dampened, they say it's a kind of systolic undershoot. All right. So if we look at this, the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure, right? That's what we talked about. This is the systolic, the peak, diastolic's the lowest. In over dampened, the systolic it's undershot. So there's systolic undershoot, and then the diastolic is too high. There's diastolic overshoot. Uh, we should probably keep this synonymous with what we started doing up there. Overshoot. And if we look at the actual numbers, we wrote some numbers out over here. You can see that for the normal waveform, this patient's actual blood pressure is 130 over 90. All right, so this is the systolic blood pressure, as probably most of you people watching know. This is the diastolic blood pressure, the bottom number, and that's, that is that patient's actual blood pressure. This is accurate and correct. Well, when, blood, when the arterial line is over dampened, you get systolic undershoot, right? And you can see the systolic blood pressure is reading lower. The systolic is undershot. And you get diastolic overshoot. The diastolic number is reading higher. Should write diastolic blood pressure there. So systolic undershoot and diastolic overshoot for this one. The thing to note though is that the maps are about the same and that's true in dampening. So in dampened arterial line waveform blood pressures, the maps are usually accurate, the mean arterial pressures, all right? But the systolic and diastolic blood pressures are inaccurate. And you'll see that same thing for under dampened. You get actually systolic overshoot and diastolic undershoot, the opposite, right? So if we go to the numbers, you can see the systolic blood pressure is super high. So you get overshoot. And the diastolic blood pressure is super low. So you're undershoot. Now, this is very confusing verbiage. And I acknowledge that. It's still sometimes I need to take a second in my own head to kind of think about it. But the way I think about it is I focus on the word dampened, right? Because dampened means it's kind of buffered too much. It's dampened. It's low. And if something is over dampened, and I should go back, I, I think about dampened as related to the systolic blood pressure. If something is over dampened, that means that it's too much. It's over dampened. It's too damp. It's too buffered. So the systolic blood pressure, it's an undershot. It's too low, right? Whereas if something is under dampened, again, think about dampened and uh, the systolic blood pressure. If it's under dampened, it's not dampened enough, right? There's not enough buffering. So the systolic blood pressure is gonna be too high. It's overshot. So we're gonna go back up and we're gonna talk about this again to kind of help uh, carry it home. So with dampening, now that we talked about what dampening is, we're gonna talk about how to test for it and how to fix it. And that's where these two tests come in. Uh, they go by a couple different names, uh, but it's the same test. It's the fast flush test, also known as the square test. And essentially what happens if we go back up to our circuit, this here is the flush. It's this little kind of rubber nibby that's on the transducer on the A-line setup. And you just pull it. You just pull it and it flushes the A-line. It shoots saline down into the A-line and flushes it out. And what you see on the waveform when you do the square flush test, so you pull that little rubber nibby, and now you're flushing saline, and essentially you lose your waveform, right? It turns into a square. You can see the square here. That's why one name for it is the square test, and the other is the fast flush test, because you're flushing. So it turns into a square, but then you let go of that nibby, right? So you stop flushing, and you watch what happens to the waveform. And that's the key. What you're watching for is this portion right here, right? Because you're gonna get a certain number of oscillations before the actual waveform comes back. And those oscillations, the number of oscillations, is critical in knowing if it is normal, aka there's no dampening, or if it is over dampened or under dampened. So normal, 
no dampening going on, you should see one to two oscillations, right? So this is essentially right where you start flushing. So you pull that rubber tubing and you flush. And you're holding that tubing, you're holding the flush, and you see the square waveform. Right here, you let go, right? You stop flushing. And what you'll see is this shoots straight down, and then you get a certain number of oscillations, right? One oscillation, two oscillation, and then it goes to its waveform, right? So this is going to be two oscillations. And that number is normal. One to two oscillations is normal. This is, there's no dampening going on, right? Now, if we go down to the over dampened and think about that verbiage again, right? We're thinking about the word dampened in regards to the systolic blood pressure. So over dampened, too much dampening, too much buffering, meaning the systolic blood pressure is going to be lower. If it's lower, it means the waveform is undershooting, right? Because it's too low. It's undershot it. And this is what the waveform looks like, right? We talked about how it uh, is flatter and wider, all right? You lose the dichrotic notch a lot of times. But then again, you can do the fast flush test or the square test. So right here is where you pull the rubber nibby and it starts flushing, right? And you're holding it, holding it, holding it. Right here, you let go. And then you see if there's an oscillation. And you can see here, there's no oscillations. There's zero. It goes right into a waveform, right? There's none of the what you see up here, this kind of down and up, right? If it went down, up, that'd be an oscillation. But we don't see any of that. There's no oscillations. And when there's less than one oscillation, it is over damp. Again, lots of confusing verbiage here, but I want you to think about that word dampened again, right? If it is too dampened, it's too buffered, it's too kind of low and inhibited, it's over dampened, meaning there's no room for oscillations because it's too dampened, nothing oscillates, all right? Again, I, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's how I try to think of it because there's a lot of different verbiage uh, that gets confusing when talking about this kind of stuff. Um, but over dampened, less than one oscillation because it's too dampened for there to be oscillations. Now, if we go down to under dampened, right? Focus on that word dampened. It's under dampened. There's not enough dampening going on, which means the stock blood pressure is too high because it's under dampened, it needs more dampening. So same thing, you see this waveform, you kind of see almost what looks like multiple dichrotic notches, your systolic blood pressure is high and you're like, huh, I wonder if there's under dampening going on. You pull the flush, you hold the flush this whole time, you let go of the flush, and then you look to see the number of oscillations. And you can see here a bunch of oscillations, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see then it goes into a waveform greater than two oscillations is under dampened. And why would that make sense? Because we think about the word dampened. It's under dampened, there's not enough dampening. So naturally there's gonna be a bunch of oscillations because there's not enough dampening going on. So how, what causes these things and how can we fix them? Well, for over dampened, and I'm just gonna rewrite over here. So this is over dampened, and I'm writing it funny intentionally so we could focus on those words. Over dampened, there's too much dampening, which means you're going to get systolic undershoot, diastolic overshoot, and you're going to have a more narrow pulse pressure, right? Because we said the, the normal blood pressure, that patient's actual blood pressure, is 130 over 90. This is 110 over 95. Well, what could cause over dampening? If you think about that, it's anything that is going to kind of uh, inhibit or buffer or decrease the pulsations through that tubing, right? Because that's going to cause dampening. And that's if you're using the wrong tubing. So the tubing is too compliant. You always want to make sure you have the correct tubing. Also, if there's any large air bubbles in the tubing, right? Because if we scroll up, if you have a big air bubble in this tubing somewhere and the arterial pulsations are trying to kind of go through, this saline column, but there's a big air bubble in here, that's going to dampen things, right? It's not gonna, the column's not gonna move as robustly. 
Same thing if there's blood clots, that's going to dampen things. If any of the connections in the tubing are loose, the connections may be between the tube and the transducer or the tube and a different stop cock going on. Anything with loosened connections, that's also going to lead to that column not being as robust. And then if the catheter is kinked or up against a wall in the blood vessel, all that can cause over dampening. So those are things you troubleshoot for, right? Power flush the catheter so you make sure there's no blood clots, get rid of any large air bubbles, make sure you're using the right tubing, make sure the connections are tight, and check to see if the catheter could be kinked at all. Up against the wall is a little harder to fix other than placing a new one. All right, so then what about under dampened, right? Not enough dampening, too many oscillations, you're going to get your systolic blood pressure is under dampened, so you get systolic overshoot, diastolic undershoot. Well, the things here, sometimes the pressure tubing is just too long. So if that column of saline is too long, that can lead to under dampening. Interestingly, small air bubbles can lead to under dampening as well. So again, make sure, take out any extra tubing you might have in that circuit. Make sure there's no air bubbles and then too many connections, right? The common theme here is kind of like anything that makes that circuit too long. So take out any additional stopcocks that might be in the tubing, et cetera, et cetera. So if we were to kind of summarize, right, over dampening, I want you guys to kind of think about this for a second. Key here is over, too much dampening. So that's going to mean the systolic blood pressure, right, too much dampening, over dampening is going to be low, which then means the diastolic blood pressure is automatically going to be high, right, because you have a more narrow pulse pressure, all right, and that is going to be from things like large air bubbles, going to be from things like blood clots, tube kinking, etc, etc. And the number of oscillations, because it's over dampened, there's going to be less than one oscillation when you do the fast flush test. That's compared to under dampening. Again, while I'm writing, think about the answers to the questions I'm going to ask. So under dampening, not enough dampening, that means your systolic blood pressure is going to be too high, overshoot, which means your diastolic blood pressure naturally is going to be too low or undershoot, which means you're going to have a wide pulse pressure. That's going to be things like too much tubing, anything that's going to make that circuit too long. Too much tubing, too many stop cocks in there. And if it is under dampened, if there's not enough dampening, you're going to have more than two oscillations that you're going to see on your fast flush or square test. But remember that with both of these, the maps, the mean arterial blood pressure, the map is going to be the same as normal. So you can still use the map, you just can't use the systolic and diastolic blood pressure when there's dampening going on. All right, hopefully that made sense. Let us know in the co uh, comments if you have any additional thoughts, comments, concerns, questions. Uh, again, lots of verbiage that's confusing, but just revisit it over and over again. Really think about uh, those words that they're using and kind of the rationale behind them. Um, and hopefully it'll start to stick. But yeah, fast flush test, square test, all that can help you see if there's dampening. You can still use the mean arterial pressure uh, and you can try troubleshooting the circuit in the ways we talked about. Hope that was helpful. Appreciate you checking out the video. Uh, check out our other videos as well as our other arterial line waveform videos in the description to this video. Stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.